as I walk the streets anywhere in this country, from, you know, Main Street to Upper Echelon, you know, high end Beverly Hills to inner city Washington, D.C., consistently there are misnomers, misrepresentations, and, and false perceptions about black men that whatever your social economic status is, we believe. Are, are there more black men in jail or in college? That's a good question. Jail. jail. More black men in jail. Uh, that's the same in jail. jail. More in jail. I'd probably say there are more black men in jail. In jail, of course. I'm going to say in jail. Jail. I would say jail. In jail. In jail. Black men in jail. In jail. Now, is that something you've heard or is that something you just feel? You know, because I work in a jail. Well, I would then say that there are more black men in jail than there are in college. In jail. Of course, I think it's more in jail than it is in college. In jail. In jail. Jail. It's probably more incarcerated than it is in, in, in college institutions. And, you know, you got to ask yourself who who's really to blame. The um, National Relays State of uh, Black America, right. and it's all about the black male. Everybody get in there together. Hi, y'all. How you doing? I'm filming right now, sorry. All right, e everybody, are there more black men in jail? Or in college. College. Jail. Yeah. Are there more black men in jail or in college? In jail. jail. Are there more black men in jail or in college? Jail. Black men in jail or in college? Jail. It's a very negative thing for the young people. And to me, that is our greatest concern. What is the message that we're allowing to be put into their mind? Are there more black men in jail or in college? Jail. What's that, what, is, what does that mean to you? Who you just saw here? For, for us, for blacks, you'll you hear the um, academics or even the, the pontificators talk about this thing, this concept of self-hate. I don't think it's rocket scientists, or you don't have to be doctors or lawyers, to figure out that at some point, if you tell someone and instill generation after generation that you're inferior, and you reinforce that in law and public policy, word and deed, Again, I don't think you have to be to go to Vienna and, and be the world's greatest psychoanalyst to figure out that sooner or later that internalization is going to be driven deep. I think the real abomination for us is really not self-hate, it's, it's more self-doubt. Because self-hate or self-actualization, they're clearly defined. Self-doubt is that thing where you start walking down the middle of the road. And if you have that inside of you, you really, really don't know who you are. Right? You don't know what we look like. You don't know what black men are. Are there more black men in jail or in college? It's high. It's probably more black men. See, I don't know. I don't know. It might be, it might be about an even ratio. But I'll probably say more. I would hope to say more in college. First and foremost, in order to even deal with the myth that there are more black men in prison than in college, we have to even, you know, go and the first thing we have to do is understand, you know, where the numbers came from. The agenda came from. And what it was designed to do. Okay. <laughs> right. You know, in, in when you do research, you know, there's an, an, an axiom that says that you figure out what it is you want to say and then you go do the research to make it say what you want it to say. Right. Right. Which ain't research, it's called BS. So, we want to take a look at the truth. Are there more black men in jail or are there more black men in college? The way we're going to do this is through the poor man's plasma display or the Board of Education. This question in its inception was a game, a uh, gambit on the black community. What you need to ask yourself is, what is the typical age range of a college person in the age range of someone in jail? College, most people fall between the age of 18 and 24. Jail is anywhere from 15 to 55. So you can see that this is truly an apples to oranges comparison. But to be fair to all the people we asked the question of, let's just look at the sheer numbers regardless of age. Prison, your hardcore, greater than one year sentencing versus jail, your two-bit crime. 
Prison had 547,200 people. Jail had 254,795 for a grand total of 801,995 incarcerated, as reported by the Bureau of Justice and Statistics. College was 864,000, as reported by the Department of Education. So for the year 2005, there were truly more black men in college than there were in jail. That's quite a bit, but from what I hear, it's a lot of people around my age getting in jail. So what's the stats on that? All right, this is where it gets a little tricky because I don't want to be accused of what I accuse other people of, and that would be segmenting or augmenting data or pulling out pockets of data in order to serve a purpose. But to answer the question, black men 18 to 24 years old, what do they look like in college? There's a total of 473,000 in prison, 106,000. So the ratio of black men in college versus prison is four to one. It's four to one, and nobody said anything about it. They keep telling and feeding our youth and feeding our women and feeding other people, feeding ourselves mm -hmm. the fact that more men in jail, more black men in jail. And that's all we've been taught right. since we were kids probably. Don't go to jail because more black men in jail. Anytime we buy into a myth about us that says something horrible about us, it, it does two things. First and foremost, it justifies all the negativity that we feel anyway. Right. Secondly, it allows us who believe that we are detached from it to look down upon them. It's good that we got these statistics and all this information and everything, but what we really need to do is just break it down and ask, how did this myth get started? Where did this all come from? Why is it that we are thinking this way? See, this is how the game works. Technically, right now, if I were to like this thing right here, I'd be committing a crime. A misdemeanor. But that's small. That's chump change. How they get to the big dollars? They do two things. One, they come up with an issue. An issue that drives your emotion, or like how we like to say, gets into your feelings. The second thing they do, they make the problem look so big, nobody can fix it except for them. Don't believe me? I got two words for you. Global warming. Anyway, our story continues down the street. Why is it whenever there's a challenge inside the black community, these guys always label it as an epidemic? Between 1984 and 1994, they threw that word on us again. The crack epidemic. Stirring up immediate frenzy from coast to coast. Be it black men robbing, black men murdering, black men jumping inside of windows and robbing their own mothers of VCRs. These guys covered it. And the amazing thing of it is that between 1992 and 1996, homicides in the black community actually went down. Guess what these guys did? Jumped their coverage by 400%. And of course, that leaves the guys on the other side of town to do something about it. These guys have to come up with a solution because the hysteria is too big for the community to handle. By 1994, everybody and their mom over there knew how to say four little words. Three strikes, you're out. What does that translate into? These guys coming up with the perfect solution. Incapacitation through incarceration. So in response to incarceration rates of young black men escalating at a pace almost as fast as the Department of Justice, an organization like this is giving birth to the Justice Policy Institute. Their mission statement pretty much sums up like this. They're looking for ways to keep young black men out of jail. Rehabilitation, reintegration in society, increasing educational levels as it relates to street crime and violence. Sounds like a noble cause, doesn't it? Wrong. This is Washington. At this level of the game, very few causes are still noble. Remember, it's about the money. So, how do we finally get to this statement right here? Bring in the last player in this game, one that should break your heart. Yep, our own NAACP. See, these two organizations wouldn't be together if it wasn't for those sweet 1960s. They wouldn't even sit on the same side of the table. But they learn how to ask the right questions, something we don't do enough. See, if this organization says to you that too many black men are in jail, you go, yeah, but it doesn't get you to do much. This organization says there's not enough black men in higher education, you go, yeah, but it doesn't get you to do much. If you say there's more black men in jail than there are in college, feeding frenzy, the whole game changes. And these guys do exactly what the press release says to do. Rethink your spending priorities. See, I know some